Welcome back. We'll turn our attention to Edo State. Uh, as you've seen there, Honorable Sergio Ogun joins us next. He's fighting for the tickets for Labour Party for the forthcoming governorship elections. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, why did you leave your party and then to Labour Party? Because I think you, you think you'll get a fair chance in Labour Party. We know it's not going to be a stroll in the park as well in the same Labour Party. Well, that wasn't the reason I left the PDP. Oh, okay. We, PDP, we had issues in PDP. And then um, some of us tried to resolve those issues. Um, I guess the factions were not just willing to come together. I was one of those that believed that we could come together as a party and resolve the issues. Oh. So whichever faction invited me for any meeting I will attend. And then you see people pointing fingers. I, I saw you in that meeting. No, I saw you in the other meeting. And the question was always, it was a PDP meeting, isn't it? So I did my best, but, well, that's uh, what I'm under the bridge now. Mm. I'm a member of the Labour Party, and that's it. Wow. But we thought you had a chance. I mean, mm. considering how it's playing out, first, not just in the States, but even within the party, with the same PDP, and with the kind of people who have put themselves up there, did you think mm. you were going to have a chance against those candidates in the party if you vie for the same ticket? Oh, sure. Uh, the, the, well, I had seen the governor a couple of times, and I mentioned my intentions to him. And the first time he said to me, I can't endorse you, but I will be unfair to others. And I agreed with him completely. And the second time I met him, asking, why were you not in the meeting? Or why are you? Because that day we were supposed to be meeting in my senatorial. Why are you not in that meeting? And I told him, I don't think I believe in what's happening there. And then we rode in his car. You know, he was going for a meeting, you know, right in Abuja here. Then well, I felt for him because, you know, he took me, there was a tutorial on how we should build the new PDP and all that and all that. After all that, and I said to him, I want to change platform. I mean, it's so discouraging. I, like I said, I felt for him. And he's like, no, 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 you are going to spend too much if you go there, stay here. And, and I remained in the party. I was still working for the party, but I wasn't hearing anything. And there was no traction. I mean, as in trying to come together. So I felt I was just out there. I'm not able to bring them together. Yes, even though I go and meet the other group, the uh, legacy group, matter of fact, I was told that I was the main aspirant of the legacy group. Really? It's, not a uh, way hammer? You see, now we do zoning. Maybe I don't really go into those issues, but I can. We must zone to not central in this election. That is why I said... Must, you say? Must? Yes, yes, yes. Must oh. soon. My, when I finished my second term in the house, I was to go for a third term, or people encouraged me to go for a third term. I said, no. We fought against those that wanted to do third term when I came to Abuja in 2015. So I will allow it to go to the second local government, to that second local, the, the other local government, because I had represented two local governments. And that was the issue. And people praised me for that. Although my other colleagues came out and they ran, because it was their right to run. So I'm one person that believes in zoning. So we are going to zone. But the challenge was I told the leader then, to say, okay, fine. You have said you zone to, not to Edo Central. But just say it. We want our, our brethren, so to speak, in Edo Central to know. It looks like they are gravitating towards the governor because he's walking the talk. Well, I can't give you all the or reasons. bringing somebody to us from the center? He had not brought anybody then, but the fillers, people already knew he was working on settling you know, for one person. And they were moving. Even those that were very strong leaders in legacy Is group. that person part of the ones we showed just now? No, that was, the one you showed just now is my brother. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I mean, end. none of them. The person you said the governor mm. is working on, mm. is any one of them here? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so that was it. So that's what I told him. I told, um, I told him he needs to speak to that. Because we are not beginning to look like traitors. If one person says, I'm going to go come to your senatorial, and he has someone in mind. But he wasn't ready to do that. And I started asking myself, what am I doing here? Oh. Mm. But from the look of things now, if you say it must be zoned to the central, but well, we have people who have also been here saying, look, central doesn't have the numbers. 
you have to play with the region, the sector that has the numbers. Yes, if you want to be motion on, you could go central. But if you go central mm. and other parties go the other way and they pull together with the numbers, mm. this is a game of numbers. <laughs> Somebody that's not correct. When they say they don't have the numbers, we have. And this election will prove it. That you, you yes, have the numbers. Yes, yes. We, okay, you know, for a long time, we didn't really have any huge state institution in the central. And we are like the Jews, the Igbos. If you go to any part of the world, you will see a some people. Any part of the world, practically. The way they will tell you, you have Igbos everywhere. So, we don't stay at home. I mean, why was the National Assembly? There are times we have opportunity to employ people. People will give me their CVs. Other times, we'll be doing empowerment. Okay, that's okay. Bring some names for unconditional cash transfer or something. We are looking for people. The same people I saw like a couple of weeks before. Graduates, they have gone to Benin. They are in Abuja, Lagos, searching for jobs. So why will a young graduate stay in the village if he's really ambitious? So our people are outside our senatorial. If there's an election today, I can tell you up to 30% of our people mm. are resident in Edo South. You hear that thing of, oh, well, So that's fine. why the South seems to be bloated? Is that what you say? Well, of course, look at the three uh, cosmopolitan local governments. The Oduredo, Oredo, Ego, Ipobaoka. The South, I mean, the South, really, the indigenous there, don't really control that. That's... So wait, what you're saying is the South doesn't have as much numbers people say they have. That's true. Yeah, because it's cosmopolitan. Okay, now, will you believe that Labour will win election in Lagos, Tinibu's backyard, or in Abuja? That's just what's playing out. It's cosmopolitan. Even in that Edo South, somebody said you have up to 30% of Igbos resident there. But Edo South, the three local governments we are talking about, you have to win those three local governments to be governor of Edo State. And that's where the votes, where we really get the vote from. But you have four other local governments in the South. But the cosmopolitan, that's where you have the ASAM people. But even if you move away a bit, you know, who uh, their local government, that's like going to ASAM. It's largely ASAM people again. But I don't want to go into this debate. But what I know is, like they say, Gafili Gadoki. You say a horse cannot run. Okay, there's a playing field. Let's see. Let an Esa person get the ticket, and I will tell you that person will be the next governor of Edo State. We must test this. You don't think Ogbede Yama, if he gets the ticket, he can't win it? Ogbede is my friend, my very good friend. Well, <laughs> but is that even fair? We have an already do person here. I'm sure they're even from the same political world. He finishes and he goes back to that same political world. And yet we are members of the same family, mm. of the same father. Which is what zoning is supposed to look after. Exactly. Uh, the fact that, you know, those same numbers that support one political part, um, one candidate in a political party should support another candidate when it goes to another place. Mm. That, that's what should happen. Uh, but we've seen saying that, you know, many times that's what ought to happen, but that's not what happens. People tend to mm. cling to their ethnic leanings so that even within areas that are considered cosmopolitan where you think that you have cosmopolitan ideas and ideas you know reigning at the end of the day people are still cleaving to their ethnic uh, uh, cleavages but uh, let me take you up on you know now that you are in the labor party we just finished a whole conversation around ideology around whether or not political parties have ideology why have you chosen of all the parties that they are, mm. why have you chosen Labour Party? Well, it's really because of Peter Obi. You know, if you remember June 2022, when he left the PDP for Labour Party, I endorsed him immediately. I didn't like the money politics that took him out of PDP. And I said that in the interview I granted in my office then. And look, if he had stayed back in PDP, he would have been humiliated. He's a private businessman. He's a billionaire. We know that. He's been a governor. But should he go take a loan or take his entire savings and put it in that primary to win the primary just to become the candidate, candidate of the party? No. But I respected that. He went to a platform that didn't stand the chance. And then, I mean, you remember, we all remember what happened. So for that courage, I respected him. 
and he's somebody I've been listening to for a while. <clears throat> you know, a man like uh, uh, Mr. Konko, Mr. Konko just said, that will stay as a governor, stay in the car and buy fuel and pay for it. I think even Chris Umba, Chris Umba said it that whenever they have meetings in government house, he gives them cheap champagne. And he will be himself said, if when the top leaders, as a governor, want to come and visit him because he does not want, he does not, the state didn't have money to offer them expensive champagne. He would say, don't worry, leader, I will come and see you. And I felt at that time, that was a kind of leader we needed in this country. Not the private jet flying presidents, not the ones that are used to profligacy of the past. We needed a frugal president. Mm. Because we can't be borrowing money and just be consuming it. So th that's the person, that that's the reason you have defected to the Labour Party. But one. Yes. Beyond that now, you are now an aspirant. Yes. Hoping to be governor of Edo State. Yes. Uh, the, well, you still have primaries to cross, and you, we see that you also have formidable opponents within the Labour Party who are also looking to who, you know, fly the party's flag. Um, I do not know how it's going to work out in terms of you know, primaries, etc. Um, you know, I hope it, it is free and fair, and at, at the end of the day, shall, shall, as they say, may the best, best man win. But what do you make of your opponents? Uh, are you... Are you happy about the quality of opponents uh, that you have within the Labour Party? Sure. And most of them are my friends, funny enough. The people see... Everybody's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I relate with people. Yeah, yeah I relate with people. But you want your seat. That seat that you want, too. Yeah, it's not it's mine. Or not. It's there for the tickets. whoever I mean, can the get ticket. it. Yeah, but I mean, no hard feelings at all. We, oh. we, should all, we should all fight for it, win fairly, squarely, and then come together to work for the party. If I might just go, you know, go back to the question you asked before about Labour Party. Mm. We're talking about ideologies. Mm -hmm. I think I have between, I have about 63 bills in the House and about 61 motions. They were all pro-people, speaking to issues, trying to address issues that affect the poor in the society. Even my projects, 99 projects that I initiated, about six that I met that I fought for money, you know, to, to continue them. All for the poor people. So, at heart, I'm working for the poor people. And that's what Labour represents. And they'll tell you, man, see the logo. You don't say dad is a family. You don't say dad, mom, and baby. What do we call it? Papa, mama, picking. Yes, we are there addressing the needs of the ordinary people. So for me, labor is home. But to come back to the issue of um, formidable opponents, yeah, we, we, the more the merrier. People used to say, but you have so many people even coming out from uh, Edo Central. Why do people just bring one or two people? If that was the case, they would say, is it that you don't have anybody from Edo South to come out? How come you have only one or two? So for Labour Party, I think the last count they say we're about 28 or 32. It's all good. It's all good. That's the two aspirants. Yes. <laughs> Have they zoned to any, to any part or they're leaving it mm, open? I don't know if they would do that. But like I said, you see, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Some people are already getting tired. Mm. And some people have gone about it the wrong way. And, but it's okay. Some of us have been here. And we know where we are now, what, what we ought to be doing. Mm. So, but it's okay that we are, we are 28 or 32. It doesn't really matter. What difference are you hoping to make if you... You know, scale the, the, the hurdle to become a candidate mm. of the Labour Party and maybe eventually get the seat. What difference are you hoping to make in Edo State? I would work for the poor and ordinary people. But people always forget that. When we talk about the big ticket, ticket items, ports, flyover, they are wonderful. Signature projects, they are good. But NBS, this is about 35.5 percent of Edo people are multi-dimensionally poor. That is still not good enough. So you have a situation where you still have out-of-school children. You still have terrible primary, secondary schools in the communities. 
high school without teachers. In spite of the Ado Best program? Well, you can visit. I represented a constituency. I'm not like a Lagos businessman. I mean, I lived with the people. You know? I built schools. I built primary healthcare centers. I renovated some. As an, in my private capacity, even before I ventured into politics, like I said at the other time, I'm an accidental politician. I, was, I set up a foundation to do stuff for the people. That's why they told me, you have never asked us for anything. You are doing all this for us. Those who be voting for don't even do this. Mm -hmm. you know, so, that's how I became a politician. They suggest so, some of your opponents are Lagos businessmen. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I mean, people that I don't want to go into that. I mean, it's not time for that. We will we'll, 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 we'll well, take them apart. When the rubber hits the road, they'll, of hear, course, they'll sure, hear it from sure, you. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so when you don't know the people, how can you address their needs? That's what I'm saying. So I know them. I have lived with them. Most of our people are agrarians. They are farmers, subsistence farming. If you even go and check at the state, that's what we do. But, but we need food security. How can we secure our farms? How can we create access to, this, to these farms? I keep talking about give full autonomy to the local government councils. They will have their money that comes from the federal. 10% of the internally generated revenue of the state will be given to them. Mm. The ones that will not have comparative advantages in certain areas, we will collaborate with them as state to get them to work. When we do that, we can task the council chairman to ensure that they don't have anybody in the forest disturbing our people from going to farm and bringing down the farm produce. When you do that, food will be affordable in the Edo state. Investors want to come to a place where there is security. They don't have to pay too much on security. Yeah, but there's a vigilante system already in place. See, that's the, that's the problem with Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now we are preaching all oh, kinetic, non-kinetic. Have good schools, good healthcare centers in the rural areas and the, in the cities. Even the secondary healthcare, they should all be mm -hmm. functioning. You know why? When you take care of those below, you don't even need vigilantes. You will oh. have nightlife oh, yeah. and businesses will boom. Well, Honorable, glad to know at least you have served at the federal level in the national legislature before. And this uh, question that you, this issue that you raised around local government administration is quite telling. From what you know, what is the bane of local government autonomy in the states? Because we've had um, how many constitutional amendments we've had, and we've not been able to get the consensus of the state houses of assembly, members of the state houses of assembly, to agree to full autonomy of local government administrations. What, in your opinion, is the bane of local government, full local government administrative and financial autonomy in Nigeria? It's just the rascality on the part of the governors and nothing less. They control the state assembly. They control the resources of the local government councils. That's all. So because they have a joint account, that's the state and the local government. So whatever resources, whatever money that comes from Abuja is paid into that joint account. So the governors determine how much will go to the local government. And they make all manner of deductions. But what I'm saying today Whatever is due them as it comes from Abuja will all go to them. And whatever resources due them from the state coffers we will give to them. Then if we have certain local governments that have comparative advantage over others where we can also tap into the resources there, we will support them. We have to grow from the base. This idea of governors keeping money in the state and, de and, and detecting what should happen and not happen in the local government, we want to put an end to that. The local gov the, the, the governors will not allow the House of Assembly to function the way they should. I have served in the federal, I've served in National Assembly. I will also grant full autonomy to my state assembly and to the judiciary. Because if you are not scared, why do you want to control everything? As a governor, you have more than enough on your plate. So if you are not going to steal money, if you are not going to divert state resources, why do you want to control who is going to be the speaker? And, and how the state assembly will function. Okay. The National Assembly are on first line charge. Why can't we get that in the state assembly? Hmm. Well, a quick one uh, here. At the end of the day, you know, all of these aspirations and every conversation we're having is about politics.
And um, from one of the questions that Malpe asked you, I I'd like you to respond to this. Do you foresee a level playing field in the selection of uh, the candidate for your party? Do you foresee a level playing field? Because politics will always be politics. So what do you see happening? Do you foresee a favoritism on the part of the party leadership, especially since you said that you're not even sure how it's all going to go? Well, I can't be sure, but I can only believe in the process. I mean, we are, we are, we are all Nigerians, are we not? I can only believe that we'll have a fair process that will also produce uh, someone that can win the election. At the end of the day, you want to win the election. So if we have a fair process that will produce a candidate for the party, we we'll all rally around that candidate, and that candidate is the one talking to you now. And then the destination is Osadebe Avenue in, a, in Beni City. Just tell them, watch this space. <laughs> That's what he's basically saying. Well, thank you for coming on this morning. Honorable Sergio Sogun is a governorship aspirant for Labour Party in Edo State. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. All right, we've got one more lap to go here today on the program. Stay with us.